It is not uncommon for raw imported borehole data to contain a higher level of detail in the lithology logging than is necessary for building meaningful geological models. Consequently, it is frequently advantageous to group several similar log geology codes together. In this video, I will demonstrate how to group lithologies in LeapFrog without altering the original data source. Our data set starts out with 12 lithologies, which we will group into six relevant groups for modeling. Grouping together similar lithologic units allows you to focus on what's relevant for your geological model and help you to avoid being distracted by excessively detailed logging. Grouping lithologies adds a new column to the interval table, and you can use this new data column to model from. The original data column will remain unchanged but is still available to be modeled from if necessary. To begin grouping lithologies, right-click on the table of interest, in this case the geology table, and select New Column Group Lithologies. Here, we can set up our new group lithology column. If you have more than one column of data in the table, select the appropriate base column. In this table, we only have the one geology column. Give the new grouped column a name. Grouping in LeapFrog is a visual process. To begin, view the grouping window beside your borehole traces. As you turn on the visibility of a unit, you will see the corresponding segments in the scene. This is a great opportunity to familiarize yourself with the unit's distribution within each borehole and throughout the overhaul project, allowing you to assess the validity of each logged unit. We'll first look at the alluvial gravel and alluvium units. To group them, multi-select them both using the shift or control key on the keyboard and then click new group. Give the new grouped unit an appropriate name and change the color if necessary by clicking on the color swatch. In the scene, we now see that these two units are grouped into a single new unit called alluvium. If I click the little black triangle, we can see the two units that comprise the new grouped unit. Next, I'll group together all the silt units by multi-selecting them and clicking New Group. In this case, I missed one of the silt units, clayey silt. To add it to the new silt group, I can simply drag it over into the group. Likewise, if I were to misclassify a unit, I could simply drag it back into the ungrouped column to remove it, or I could drag it into another existing group. Next, I'll group together the mica schist and the schist. When building a grouped column in LeapFrog, it's very important to group every unit you wish to model when you're building your geological model, even if it should be in a group by itself. That being said, if you have a core loss unit, for example, you can choose not to group that unit and it will not be represented in the new column. I will pause the grouping process for a moment to explain a little more about grouped columns in LeapFrog. For now, I'll click OK to generate the grouped column and take a look at it. Double-click the table to view the new grouped column. As you can see, grouped codes appear in the grouped column, but the ungrouped individual codes do not appear in that grouped column. Later, when it comes time to create the geological model, if you want to build contact points and surfaces based on the information from a grouped column of data, you must fully populate the grouped column by grouping every unit you wish to model, even if it's in a group by itself. To return to the grouping window to finish up the grouping process, simply double-click on it in the project tree or click the editing pencil for the group lith column in the shape list. This brings us right back to where we were. The remaining codes don't need to be grouped together, but they do need to be moved individually over to the grouped column so that they can be considered while building the geological model. To do so, we can use the auto group function. In this case, I'll select one group per value and click the group button. I can change the names of any of these units if necessary. Click OK to process the table. We now have the option to view the table by its imported geology or by the new group lith column. As we've seen, grouping is a visual and dynamic process in LeapFrog. Updates can be made to the groups at any time during the modeling process, and any dependent models will automatically be updated to reflect the change. 
If necessary, specific units within models created from a grouped lithology can be later refined based on the original data column or any other data column. This can be done using refined models, which will be covered in a subsequent video.